Hey, yo, what's going on right now? You're watching Casino is the Name, and in this video, we're going to talk about government contracts and accounting. Now, I want to get this out of the way real quick. I'm an accountant. I'm an actual accountant. I actually do government contracts. I actually do government contracts and accounting, okay? So in, if there was any kind of questions about it, yes, I'm going to clear this up right now. I do make six figures doing accounting and working on government contracts. So I want to, I just want to put this out there, right? So that there's no kind of questions about, does this person actually do what they're talking about? Have they actually lived it? Yes, I have. I do not believe in talking about things that I don't know much about, or I haven't experienced or know someone or witness someone go through a certain thing or, or speaking to subject matter experts who have no idea what they're talking about. I do not believe in that. Now, can that happen? And does that kind of thing happen? Yes, there's sometimes some people may contact someone like myself who does videos for people like you guys and they speak on things as though they are subject matter experts and they may have no idea what they're talking about. But in this video, we are fortunate because I have already curated myself okay i already know everything that i'm talking about all right i'm not going to be talking about things that i have no idea what i'm talking about and you guys get the benefit from my experiences in government contracts and in government contracts for accountants and i guess you could just say uh in accounting because i can tell you exactly how to become an accountant i can tell you exactly about uh, the kind of things that you may end up doing in, as far as in government contracts i can tell you the things that i have experienced and here we go all right so first of all what are government contracts does everybody know what government contracts are? I like to think so, but just in case you guys do not know, government contracts are the way that the government buys products and services. So the government has to operate, it has to run, right? So the government uh, needs uh, laptops, right? The government employees work on laptops. The government is not building their own laptops, all right? They're, they're not necessarily like, you don't go to the store and buy a government laptop. They are gonna be HP, Dell, uh, something like that. You might have some MacBook government country, uh, government laptops. I don't know, but you're gonna see an already established company that is building computers and the government just purchases from those said businesses. Now, the government, does want to get small businesses involved because as a small business, there's very few small businesses that are building uh, laptops or computers at a large scale. So, you know, naturally the government is going to go to what's already on the market and what's already on the market is typically something that is already from a large company. But the way they involve small businesses is they say, hey, 23% or so, or maybe 5% of these laptops or computers are gonna come from a small business or from a woman-owned small business or from a veteran-owned small business. So they're saying, hey, you know, 100% we, we, of our order, at least 5% or 2% or 10% of, of our 100% of our laptops need to come from a small business. So that's how you get involved. And the way then you reach out to the large corporations and you say, hey, hey, uh, Hewlett Packard, hey, uh, Apple, uh, the government wants me to, to wants this kind of computer and uh, I am going to, you know, I have an opportunity to supply those computers when you don't because they won't accept them from you because you're too large. Right. Pause. But uh, you, tell me how much you're going to charge me as, you know, as a company to buy, you know, a thousand laptops. Then I can turn around and tell the government, OK, the thousand laptops going to cost me this much. I'll supply them to you guys for this much. So maybe they say, well, it's a thousand dollars per laptop. Okay. So, so maybe you're charging the government $1,200 per laptop. You make that $200 difference per thousand laptops. That's a $200,000 profit. You see, see how that kind of works, right? All right. So, um, 
that is an example of how government contracts work. You know, the government needs the laptops, all right? And they can get small businesses involved by allowing you to participate in the procurement of said items, okay? That's also the same thing with services, okay? So accounting services still need to be rendered. Right. They may need a financial manager. They need uh, maybe a team of financial managers, depending on what kind of mission they're supporting. They need contractors. So they hire, they outsource that work to the private sector to provide bodies so that they can uh, get this work done. OK. And so that's just an example of how you can maybe get into government contracts as an accountant. Now, second part of this is what is an accountant? All right. What is an accountant? OK, so an accountant is basically, according to the government, someone who has a bachelor's degree in accounting, finance, economics or some sort of business related field with at least 24 credit hours in accounting. OK, that is all that's required to sit in an accountant's role now. Some roles may require just by the nature of the position that you have a CPA, CGFM, CDFM, a CIA, which is Certified Internal Auditor. Uh, C, uh, as a matter of fact, let me explain the certifications. CPA, Certified Public Accountant. CGFM, Certified Government Financial Manager. CDFM, Certified Department of Defense Financial Manager. Uh, CIA, Certified Internal Auditor. CFE, Certified Fraud Examiner. Any of these types of certifications it's other certifications as well but this is just an example of the type of certifications that you can get as an accountant to and, and some of these roles may require these certifications but the vast majority of roles do not require these certifications okay I do not personally have a certification and I made six figures in accounting now six figures uh, just for clarity, is just a hundred thousand or more. Okay, so I make a I make a couple thousand dollars more than hundred. I make like a hundred and ten right now, uh, and uh, I just had a role that was offered to me. Uh, they they looked at my resume. They reached out to me. Um, they wanted to, they wanted me to uh, take this position. The position was was paying hundred and fifty thousand a year. I was uh, it was on the contract. Right. It was a government contract and they had a role for one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars to sit in this position. But they require you have one of these certifications. They didn't care which certification they said CGFM, CFE, CDFM, CPA, CI, just any certification. That's what they wanted. But I do not have one of those certifications. Now, can I still make two hundred thousand dollars a year? as a as an as an accountant with no certification doing government contracts absolutely you still can okay can i make hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year with no certification absolutely as a matter of fact i'm actually just getting back into the space i tried something else for a while um I'm, i documented that as well that's going to be on this channel it's not on here right now but i documented this other career path because i had never in my entire adult life had a job that wasn't government related in some form of fashion. I've always kind of worked for the federal government my entire adult life. I was in the military and then I was, so I was in the Air Force. I did that. I did that for many years. Um, and then I worked for Department of Veteran Affairs and then I worked for Homeland Security and and uh, that pretty much summed up the most of my adult life. And then I wanted to see what private sector was like. And so I tried working in a space and I'm going to say, it, I'm going to say, it. I did car sales. I always wanted to sell cars. I did car sales. I always wanted to sell cars. My hats off to these people. Oh my God, the level of stress that private sector works under is crazy. Don't get me wrong. We all have our own levels of stress, but I will say, uh, the stress was was high for most people in that space is a lot of hours and uh, wasn't really financially rewarding to me, like to be spending that much time. I, I can make that much as much as is most people in that space make at home as an accountant working from home. 
you know, I, you can make a hundred plus thousand a year working from home. I know people making one hundred and forty-five thousand that I was working with, uh, one hundred and fifty thousand, one hundred and eighty thousand working from home, because our agency was pretty much working from home. <laughs> you know, so uh, that that's just what it was, and um, to know that. You know, we still get holidays, weekends, and all of that kind of stuff, and and uh, yeah, it's just just better, more flexible schedule. wasn't so rigorous um, of a you know we had a we had a very flexible schedule with the government. The government is trying to make sure that you have a good, strong work life balance. They want you to be able to take care of home and take care of the nation. All right, so uh, yeah, like I, I didn't enjoy that, and I saw and see, I knew that there were things outside of that, right? My fear for most people working in private sector is to, the feeling that there's nothing else out there, right? So I wasn't as stressed. I wasn't nearly as stressed as everyone else. Um, of course, I didn't stay there too long, like two months. Um, but I didn't stay there very long. You know, accounting was calling my name. And I, and I had to get back to, like, serious money, okay? Uh, and, you know, more time, just having time, you know, with your family, you know, and stuff like that, or just to yourself. Jeez, it was no time. I, I literally almost did no videos, you know, well, I haven't uploaded videos. I was recording my, you know, my journey, but uh, I haven't really posted those videos because I was working way too much and I was tired and I didn't edit anything and I didn't, I just didn't feel like it. Anyway. Um, back into accounting, um, and I want to tell you guys what it's like being an accountant because some of you guys may not actually know. Um, some of you accountants may actually not not actually know. Many of you who may not have been in uh, the government sector or even maybe even private sector. I don't know what you guys do for a living, but if you guys are interested or if you're students and you're looking to get into the world of accounting, I want to tell you that. Um, you know, first of all, I just took one of the first opportunities that that kind of came to me. And it's a really dope position that um, I, I did take. I'm not going to speak on what that is exactly, but I will say that being an accountant and having a certain skill set and certain um, certain attributes that agencies are looking for. Um, it can be very, it can be powerful, you know, companies, you know, company I'm um, talking about flew me, flew me down to, uh, you know, I did the interview process and, um, they, they flew me out to meet them because the, the job is in a different city. I mean, I live in Atlanta. The job is not in Atlanta. So, uh, but they flew me, they flew me out, um, you know, brought me in, I met the team, you know, and that was part of the process. But, you know, when you are wanted, you know, as an accountant, especially, see, I can't speak on a lot of different other situations. I know doctors who've definitely been flown in because they wanted to interview them or they wanted to meet the doctor in person. And, you know, I'm sure that it, it may be the same for other professional uh, career paths, like, like, uh, lawyers, um, engineers, things like that, computer scientists. I'm sure some of these larger corporations, maybe even some of these smaller corporations would be uh, flying some of these people out. And, you know, especially if you go through recruiters and things like that. So, you know, as an accountant, you can go through a recruiter, find your recruiter uh, or, or multiple recruiters, and you can go through recruiting agencies. They'll you know, argue, argue on your behalf, half of uh, what they believe you should be worth or, um, you know, explain the things that are in your resume that may not be so clear. They already have roles assigned that, you know, that they can kind of, their job is to weed through uh, all of the different types of applicants and just only send up some of the best applicants. So, I would absolutely say go through a recruiter. That's what I did. That's what I do. I I go through recruiters. Um, 
for looking for other accounting roles, you know? So if, if you're looking for the $140,000, $150,000 jobs, they do exist. I get the emails from recruiters saying, hey, would you be interested in this position? Yes, I'm interested or no, I'm not interested. And they'll go and, you know, if you're interested, they'll go and contact because they're in communication with the hiring manager and they can get you a direct interview in a day or two. And, you know, sometimes it may take a little little longer, especially with the kind of roles that I go for. Um, the roles that I go for take several weeks uh, from the time that, you know, um, you so that that you've selected what you want to go for. And so I had gone up for a position that was like um, 150, 160. But the position that I actually took was because it was a better location. It was it was a so basically I was going for a position. I was going to have to go to like Virginia, D.C. area for like 150. Right. And that was really just because I was done with private sector. I was just getting back into the space and, you know, and, you know, my goal was I'm headed to the two hundred thousand dollar goal jobs or whatever. But uh, while I was in my interview, you know, and. Uh, Another opportunity came out while I was in my interviews. Another hiring manager was like, hey, listen, I'm on the panel, you know, but I would love for you to come to our location. Um, and if you'd be interested, it's less money than what you were, what you're worth. But, you know, we, we can try to get you into something, you know, when more things come about because of your skill set as an auditor. And I was like, you know what? I really prefer to be in the other space, in the other area. Cool, I'll do it, right? And so, you know, they sent me my offer letter, and they were like, can you fly out tomorrow? Well, I was supposed to go to the dealership tomorrow, but absolutely, I'm on the next flight down. <laughs> so they said, pick a flight. Uh, pick my flight, and they booked my flight. Uh, I think the flight was over $500, uh, for just that flight, just because, you know, I was flying out the next day. But, um, you know, companies investing in you can, is, is valuable, you know, investing in your uh, education because you, you need continuing education if you sit in some of these accounting positions. So they have to send you for more training. And, um, and then right after that, I had other opportunities popping up. And so... Um, just being back into the accounting space is, is the, the degree. You know, everybody talk about going to get a college degree. That degree is so valuable, man. It was crazy. I was at the dealership, and I already know that I'm leaving in like seven days or so, right? Like that's, I already knew I was leaving the dealership in seven days to start this other position back in accounting. Um, and don't get me wrong, I tried to give the car sales thing like a real good go at it um but it just it's just not as comfortable as i would like to live and it's a lot of hours for i won't say very little pay but uh, eh, i won't say it's very little pay because you can make money not not what i'm used to not for the level of effort and time and all of that it's just not the same so but while I was there, it was a very experienced salesman there. And he said, you know, he was like, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing good. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I'm about to leave up out of here. And the guy was like, no, 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 don't leave. Do not leave. OK, don't leave. Trust me. This is a six figure job. Like you can make six figures here. You know, you can make six figures here. You don't have to leave here. And so I said, yeah, I keep hearing that, right? He said, I'm telling you, just stick with it. I'm telling you, give it two years, you'll be making six figures. Just give it two years, and I'm telling you, you're going to be making six figures. Just give it two years. And, and I looked at this guy, and I did everything I could, right, to like, not laugh, okay? 
I had no, first of all, I didn't know he was going to say give it two years to make six figures. Because I'm seven days away from six figures. You know, like I'm, you know, I'm at six figures now. Like, you know, in seven days, the new job is six figures, right? But when he said give it two years and you'll be at six figures, I, I couldn't believe he was trying to, and don't get me wrong. That, and I'm sure that might be good for a lot of people. I, I get it. That is good for a lot of people. Because six figures, you know, 100,000 plus is 100,000, you know, whatever. That's, that's great. But I couldn't believe that this guy, I thought he was saying, you know, you can, you know, in a year's time, you'll get the, you know, because we're in sales. But this guy killed me. <laughs> When he said that, he was like, give it two years and you'll be at six figures. And I was like, man, I need to be at six figures in a month. Okay, I need to be I need to be earning a six figure salary in a month. OK, I don't have the, the two years to be waiting and playing. I'm, I, yeah. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to say that because a lot of you guys now I'm not saying your first year in, in accounting, you're going to be making six figures. No. I'm not saying that. Is it possible? It's possible, but that's not what I'm saying. Okay? Don't expect that. But it's definitely a much higher quality of life working um, the way I was working for the government, uh, where I worked for the government in different areas um, compared to anything that I have personally experienced uh, during government contracts. I mean, during uh, the private sector. So, like, non-government jobs and the way people operate out there is, is way different. It's definitely a higher level of standard from what I've experienced um, dealing with the government um, than I have private sector. So that's also still just my experience, okay? Um, but yes, I just that's why I say I want to come on here and say, hey, I have done government contracts for multiple years. I have done multiple types of government contracts. I have also been a federal employee. I've been a, a military. I've done all of those things. And I'm here to just say that accounting, having that accounting degree is very, very powerful. It's powerful, man. When these people putting you on planes and flying you in to interview, you know, to talk to you because they want to meet you face to face and they want to show you around and they want to do these kind of things. I'm telling you, think about it. Just think about that. All right. Anyway, right now you're watching Casino as a name. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we out. Yeah, hedge fund managers making a million dollars an hour. No, it's crazy, right? It's money everywhere. It's money in everything. I want to help you. Start your business today. Come join my royal family. Subscribe to Casino is the name.